In aviation in general, everything is about aerodynamics and it doesn't seem to be so with paramotors. In today's chapter, we'll discuss why it is so. Welcome to our classroom insights into paramotor geometry. This is part 34 and it's one of my favorite topics. One reasoning why paramotor manufacturers in general don't really care about aerodynamics is that we fly too slow and aerodynamics doesn't really matter at such low speeds. Now, honestly, this is nonsense. And there is one single obvious proof for that, and that is paraglider manufacturers. Paraglider manufacturers do care a lot about aerodynamics, reducing drag, in, uh, increasing aerodynamics efficiency and, and lift. There are several examples I could name. One of the obvious moves how to increase the efficiency and speed of a paraglider is reducing the number of lines. So we, we started somewhere in the with a four or five line setup and now the high performance glider cut that to three, two and a half, or even two, two liner setup. The paraglider manufacturers are also reducing the number of the lines in every single row. So we happen to, so the high competition performance gliders end up flying on a very few lines. A part of that, paraglider manufacturers use thinner and thinner lines. They sacrifice uh, the sheeting of the lines just to have them even thinner and reduce the drag. The, uh, the high comp on high competition and performance gliders, they use different thickness of the lines so they use thinner and thinner lines up there in the gallery when the load is distributed into more lines and they can afford to use thinner lines. They pay a lot of attention to the drag of the profile itself. So for higher performance, paraglider manufacturers design thinner profiles, uh, design high, higher aspect ratio shapes, and uh, they try to adjust manufacturing processes to reduce the wrinkles that are caused by sewing the sewing machine and the, and the shaping of the cloth. Using more cells for high performance gliders uh, makes the surface of the glider more clean and reduces the drag as well. Recently, uh, trailing edge uh, reinforcements, additional ribs on the trailing edge became standard in paragliders just to make the trailing edge more sharp and clean and reduce the, in the, the drag uh, at, at the backside of the, of, the, of the foil. Paraglider manufacturers also use nowadays really tiny risers again to reduce the drag. I mean they pay so much attention to this little part of the glider just to make it maybe half size while keeping the strength. Another big deal uh, in paragliding how to reduce drag to achieve higher performance is reducing drag using cocoon and pod harnesses. Now these beautiful, really long, big, inflated kind of kayaks just to reduce the drag. All these are proofs that reducing drag makes sense even with, in paragliding and paramotoring because this is how paraglider manufacturers increase the efficiency and speed of their gliders. And now here, here come the paramotor manufacturers and uh, most of the paramotors out there are just, are just a bunch of tubes and tube is a horrible profile in terms of drag. Uh, I wouldn't even call it a profile. <laughs> so, so paramotor manufacturers, in order to make the cage stronger and more resistant to crashes, uh, so we have a bunch of tubes everywhere and additional kind of Velcros to attach to the netting or keeping the parts of the cage together. Uh, so, so the paraglider manufacturers pay so much attention to reduce the thickness of the line from 0.4 to 0.3 and then on the paramotor we just expose a, a, a two inch a two inch wide velcro strap onto the cage all this is just uh, causing 
additional drag and a massive amount of additional drag and you have to take into consideration that the panel of the cage itself is not exposed only to the airflow given by the fleet of uh, speed of flight but it's also but the speed of the airflow is increased by the propeller itself another example of neglecting the the drag is uh, having a really big fuel tank or a fuel tank positioned way too low so it hangs below the pilot directly exposed to the airflow and causing immense amount of drag. Unfortunately, paramotor manufacturers don't have access into wind tunnels to, to measure this. There are some ways how to calculate in, in computer or using some modeling software, but even based on this empirical experience that paraglider manufacturers have, we know that drag is relevant even for our speeds and with the development of gliders and paramotors we don't fly that slow at all and um, today's paragliders and paramotors are capable to fly at speeds of 60 70 80 kilometers per hour or and some high competition gliders slalom gliders even faster so this is actually speed of of, of small aircrafts. Marcel Dassault, a major and leading French engineer and, and uh, aircraft industrialist, said that in, for a plane in order to fly well it has to be beautiful and, and trust me he knows his thing. If the shape is good for aerodynamics it is beautiful, you're gonna like it. It's just the natural way how we perceive things. So if something looks aerodynamic it will most probably be so. Well, I didn't know this quote when I, when I started designing the Scout and I started to design the Scout in order to fly well without any compromises and it turned out to, to be beautiful. I think the last chapter in this series that we will discuss next time is various setups for the, for the tandem flight. It was actually a question posted by one of our YouTube viewers in a comment. Should you have any suggestions what you would like to know about, please leave a comment, send me an email and thanks for watching and see you soon.